Warning. The medical views expressed in this podcast are for entertainment purposes only and are not necessarily the opinions of medical professionals. They are the views of paranoid hypochondriacs. So if you actually have concerns, please see an actual doctor. Hello, and welcome to our first and probably our last podcast. If you have a minor discomfort in your upper chest and you immediately assume it's a cardiac arrest, oh, doctor, doctor, please give me an answer. Got this pain in my left ball, and I just know that it's cancer. Know that it's cancer. Now all of our doctors are feeling harassed, so this is probably our last pod. <coughs> Sounds like pneumonia. Probably our last podcast. Hello and welcome to Probably Our Last Podcast with me, Christian Lees. I'm Alex Sill. And I'm Joan Lees. Did Gar- you, did I mean, come on, you had to sip through my introduction, no, I, no, first of all. No, they won't be able to hear that. They, your mic was on. <laughs> also, there's a video. They'd be like, "What is he doing?" I'm over thirsty. There? Not okay. okay. Thank mm. you for joining us. Yeah, thank it's you. Been a few we, months. We've been, oh, we've all been. We went back home for for Christmas and New Year. Where's home? For those that don't know, we we live we we've we've been living in Los Angeles for a while, but we went back home to London for New Year and Christmas. How was your New Year, Alex? Was it good? You, were you wait? You've been to, he, Alex has been touring the world. With a band called um, Protocol, yeah, Simon Phillips. Alex, for those of you who don't know, is an amazing guitarist. Um, and but he's been touring the world. Where were you when it came? Started in Japan, and then China, and then uh, China. The, long, the longest uh, was uh, the longest run was in Europe. You loved China, didn't you? I remember you saying no you one like that was one Europe. of your favorite places, wasn't it? Nope. No, it wasn't. Should no. we not? No. no. Well, I mean, Japan. I know you loved. <coughs> Japan was great. And Japan's very clean. It's a good place for hypochondriac. Japan's very clean. Japan. Oh, very cleanly. I will say, no trash whatsoever yeah. in the streets. Mum talked Tokyo. about that. Mum talked about Japan being yeah. that way. Very yeah. cleanly. They take pride in their. Uh, I wonder if that's upkeep. because a lot of them are hypochondriacs. Um, I, I think you just jumped to it. You're trying to fit in with the theme here of the podcast, and it didn't work. Oh, yeah. isn't that what we're supposed to do? I mean, I or know. should we just talk about anything? No, I think we should talk or about should, Japan. Or, should, or would it be nice to just tie into the podcast? No, I don't know. I think Japan is more, more, more what we're talking about. Okay, right you're now. right. Sorry, I shouldn't have tried to do my job. No. No one's paying you. No. No, we're not being paid. No. Getting paid the big bucks. I can pay you guys something. Um, you know, I mean, no thanks. Anyway, I, I was but talking to Alex about his tour. Well, he survived, which is good. He did survive. Survived. I didn't get sick once <coughs> on any of the and tours. All the airplanes. Is that real? It's, it's, it's true. That's that's the truth. It's the true. Easiest well, that's place good. to get sick is on an airplane. Yeah, my God, you did so much traveling. I'm actually super impressed. Did anyone get sick in the band? Yes. Wow. And traveling in the the tour van while oh. someone is sick in front oh. of you. Oh. Alex, Alex as well. Alex is our cousin. Uh, me and Joan are twins. Alex is our cousin, so we've known for a long time. Recently, I went to Disney with him, and it's so funny. If somebody sneezes in Alex's vicinity or coughs in Alex's vicinity, he physically recoils. <laughs> and it's so funny. I mean, now, I don't know when this episode is aired, but now actually the, con- the coronavirus yeah, it's is hot on the kind scene. of scary. It's only just, oh. you know, it's kind of entered every, every country, well, lots of countries at the minute. I mean, obviously yeah. it's more prevalent in China. It's where it's come from. It's kind of a serious situation. But I mean, for people like us anyway, I, I would never consider myself people like us. People like us. I mean, Alex. I I've learned a lot from 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 Alex. Uh, um, what are you talking about? What do you mean, people like us? People that <coughs> worry about hypochondriacs. Hypochondriacs. Got what do you think I'm talking about? I was, people? I was gonna start having a go at you. I'm like, what, what are you saying? M- men. Yeah. Okay. Let's beat him up. Every time the word um, coronavirus is said, you should press the ominous. Where's the ominous sound? Yeah, there, there it is. is. There we okay. go. Yeah. So just, just every time we say the so word coronavirus. So, Kate, just, be, just keep so that, that, keep that keep up. Every time we say tasks. coronavirus. Kate? Coronavirus? Okay, we're going to keep trying to trick her out with that. Yeah. That's cool. So, anyway, no, it's a bit, it's a, let's talk about that, though, because that's happening what, right now. What, the coronavirus? I don't know, yeah, I don't know when this has come out, but, I mean, I, I mean, yeah, I saw, who was it? I saw, I think I saw your story. Ah. Masks are already, masks yes. are already <clears> out in Target. I mean, but they're sold out. There is a thing. I, I, I'll say a story quickly. Yeah. We were at Target because I 
was getting, I have allergies and me and my brother Christian have suffered with nosebleeds um, for our whole lives. And I had a nosebleed yesterday. Do you get nosebleeds? Yeah, I had terrible n- nosebleed in, in Europe. Like, Did you? Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's because it gets when it's dry. The reason I remember <laughs> is, is uh, no, finish your story. Yeah, first. yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say, talking. I was just going to say that, uh, like, I've always worried ever since I was a kid, and I know nosebleeds are nothing to worry about, but even when I was a kid, I thought bleeding in the brain, there's this thing about you can have a tumor in between your eyes, like in your... Yeah, it's not comforting to have blood <coughs> pouring out no, it's of not. anything. But then I also looked up the symptoms <laughs> of... <laughs> never comforting, no. But I also looked up the symptoms of the coronavirus, and um, oh, I was geez. waiting to see on it. I was waiting to see a nosebleed um, pop up, but it didn't. But I still thought I was going to die. Nosebleeds are horrible anyway for people that worry and people with anxiety because even though you know it's quite a common thing, you're just losing blood. And yeah. you just think it's never going to stop. When it's yeah. happening, you think, it's never going to stop. I'm going to um, die. I'm going to bleed out and die. Yeah. and I During the Super Bowl. Oh, I'm dying. Yeah, I'm Man. dying during the Super Bowl. Oh, no. Um, and the 49ers are losing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad day. Yeah. Well, you survived. Yes. Um, I had my a girlfriend ble- was I had a nosebleed on a plane once. Do you I want to talk about my girlfriend for a second. You went right over me. Okay. Do we have a chit? Do we have a fanfare button? There we go. I have a girlfriend now. Her name's has a girlfriend. She's here. Wait. My girlfriend's also here, but that's not as much of a. I mean, we've been together for a long time, so. Look at that face. <laughs> Get, do, do the sad button. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's working. She's <laughs> working. I love you, Kate. But. Um, yeah, it's nice. Jonah Jonah had these jokes. If anybody follows Jonah on Instagram. If anybody. Jonah's followed um Jonah's followed Jonah's this running joke for a long time. And it's and it's been funny, but it was also kind of sad. But it, it he get <laughs> lots of laughs out of it. And it was this invisible girlfriend. Oh, the thing joke. Where he used to, yeah. Yeah, and, and it it become a part of him because it wasn't just taking photos. It was for example, like if if there's a sound that we hear, it's oh that's just you know, my invisible girlfriend, and it was all the time. And I was surprised <laughs> that, he ha- that he wasn't just attracting that for life. And it's beautiful to see there's this lovely post. It, uh, it's, not, it's nice to see. I got a beautiful girlfriend, guys. <laughs> yeah, you sound like Tommy, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you talk like that. Um, and now I have to know, need to worry in the world, and I'm, it's cured now my I hypochondria. Have to know, need to worry I have now I have to know, need to worry in the world. I have no need to worry in the world, guys. I'm yeah. so happy. I'm not a hypochondriac anymore. Okay. Yeah. I was just about to say before that happened, one of my scariest um, nosebleed stories was actually an airplane. Sorry to bring it back to the nosebleeds. I know that's... Oh, let's go. That's let's on, go. Let's just do on. it. Come on. But come on. It's going to segue into the road stories. Yes, it will. So this particular nosebleed, I think I was on a, I was either on a plane coming back from visiting Kate or coming back from LA. I know it was a long haul flight. I was with mum and Jonah. Oh yeah, so I can't think. It doesn't matter when it was. Get on with it. But um, <laughs> I had started to have a nose nosebleed and it was, you know, I don't know if any, if you, if you don't know, the longest you really want to have a nosebleed is 20 minutes. Like if it the gets The longest past you want to have one? Yeah, if you're yeah. ever go- if you're planning <laughs> on having a nosebleed, you guys would really soon. love for this to stop. If you're planning on having a nosebleed, you want it to be you around want it to last 10 about 20 minutes. That's 20 the only time. Minutes. No, you know what I mean. That like if it gets past 20 minutes, it's time yeah, to it's start worrying yeah. and and get. And they I don't tell know, you to go call, to the call ER. A doctor or something. Tell you to go to the ER. Um, at this point, in an airplane toilet, it looks like a Quentin Tarantino movie. There's blood everywhere, all over the mirror. There's loads of women with their feet. What happens with the altitude is so so I went I went straight to the bathroom right. But what happens when you're so high up in the air is that actually because of the air pressure, it was, my blood was really thin. thin. It was running really fast. And I'd been bleeding profusely for about 45 minutes. Oh, it was scary. Shit. To yeah. where over the tannoy, they actually called doctors up to me. And I had two women doctors come up to me. One doctor, this is a good tip for anybody that's profusely with nosebleeds. Nothing to be embarrassed about. With nosebleeds. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> What's happening to us today? It's every day. It People every listen day. to this podcast <laughs> know that we can't. Anyway, talk. for anybody that suffers with nosebleeds, this one doctor gave me good advice before it stopped. She said, um, the best thing to stop a very, very... Um, uh, Tampon. Serious... Oh my god! That are you the type? Of, are you the type of person that just uh, will uh, come uh, in? Hey, dude, here's this. See this uh, part uh, in the movie. Wait, wait, watch yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tampons are supposed to be really good if it's a really serious nosebleed. I didn't have any. Luckily, it stopped. They, my mum told me afterwards, after we learned that they told her they might have to land the plane. So yeah, they didn't want to worry you, but they yeah. were. Uh, we were really worried. 
And we just kept saying, it's fine, don't worry. But the woman, when she was speaking to us, was like, yeah, he's losing a lot of blood. And if it continues, like, we have to land the plane because there's no blood and he's, like, losing too much. So There's like, no blood. There's no blood on the plane. There's just no blood. No blood. There's yeah, no blood yeah. in him anymore. They'd seen it. And I was he's out gotten, of blood. Never gotten that bad. So let's no, hear no your bad. nosebleed story. Well, on the, the tour, I was in Germany. Uh, there was this town called Osnabrück. Really nice town, actually. And we, we Shout out Osnabrück. Uh, Osnabrück! Osnabrück! Woo! It was good. Some great uh, schnitzel. Yeah, it's I was a college say. town. It's cool. Have some beer. Schnitzel. You oh. what he's like. <laughs> yeah. College town. College. Some I, great. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. That's I, some great schnitzel. <laughs> yeah, 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 just, yeah, both those <laughs> things the are there. But yes, uh, yeah. good beer. Yeah. Beer for lunch. Pils vom fast, as they call it. Anyway. Pils vom fast. They, uh, they call it Bevo there as well. Really? That, oh, no, that's probably Czech. Just Czech. I didn't hear that. Just throwing in there that you're a but man of the world. <coughs> we were oh, staying in an... Czech in Republic. Oh, so no, it's in the Czech Republic. Uh, we were, yeah, it was a nice hotel. And for whatever reason, when you go to Europe, it's like there's that... In a lot of hotels, there's that big, like, kind of comforter. And you're either freezing yeah. to death in your room, or it's like you're you're sweating. Yeah, it's oh. like body yeah, weight. Yeah. It's either too much, yeah. and then you take it off, Horrible. and you're too cold. So this room, there's no thermostat change. You can't avoid. Oh. You can't control any of that. Interesting. And the uh, the room got so warm. I woke up in the middle of the night with bl- blood oh, yeah. going everywhere. He, he can got in the shower. That. It was like you know the Norman Bates yeah, thing. Yeah, and I know. It's like yeah. I'd be in the shower. I'd start having nosebleeds. But <laughs> the thing about that hotel was that. The uh, they had this really cool like um, I don't know bonus thing where if you don't have your room cleaned, mm. you get a five euro voucher for the bar or the restaurant. Right. So if they're you, you know they're conserving water and energy by them not having to go in and clean up your shit. Right. So they say if you're well, opting out. Good. So I didn't have my room cleaned at all the whole time. We stayed there for like a week. So I blood can't, everywhere. Then, yeah, there's the blood German everywhere. There's like came to investigate you after seeing <laughs> yeah, a bath the, full the of room blood. looked like a crime scene. Oh. It looks like you've killed yourself. It in was here. donated to, to science or something. <laughs> but it wow. was uh yeah, there was blood all over the, the towels. But that is not a hypochondriac story. Not, really. not, no, not the know, definitely not the worst a, one I had on the road. We've gone on a bit of a nosebleed tangent, but we all have anxiety. In fact, you know what? I'm going to be honest. When we first started this podcast, I kind of felt like I was a voice of the other side of the argument. I didn't feel as much of a hypochondriac. I felt like you don't feel hypochondriac. You, it's not that's not acceptable. Don't touch me. Lovely. Um, (laughs) But no, I didn't. I don't know whether it's doing this podcast with you or I don't know what it is. But recently, I definitely joined the bandwagon. I've had these kind of weird i only ever had one panic attack in my life previous to this podcast and now i've been having like panic 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 attacks yeah been having panic strike well we should get i think we then now's a good time we all have our own stories yeah Yeah. let's do what should we start with story of the week story of the week week. (laughs) story of the week all right, you, you want to start us off? I have one too. Start what a week it's been. Now I'm excited to. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, we keep these stories from each other now. Just we kind of do. Moment. Yeah, yeah, we surprise. Do, yeah, we, used to, little, we used to tell each other. Little surprising nuggets of hypochondria moments. So, I have been under the weather. Like a few weeks ago, I actually had a throat infection and it wasn't going to go away until I had like antibiotics and stuff, but that was all good. And I wasn't too worried about that. I mean, that kind of stuff, it's just like, it is what it is. You can't over obsess. Like for a hypochondria, when you are actually ill, it's like, you, it's not classed as hypochondria anymore. You Like you're ill. Hypochondria is like worrying you're going to get sick and like get something really bad. Yeah. I feel like more so. Um, <clears throat> so that was all fine. But then I was recovering from that. And then I couldn't tell, is this allergies? I don't want to get sick again. So I started getting really paranoid I was going to get sick again. So I started really washing my hands a lot and trying to, you know, I became Alex for a little bit. And mm. I still, I still am just kind I of. I wash my hands a lot. Yeah, Alex washes his hands a lot. But I'm trying to, trying to do that more. Anyway, then I had this um, little, little nosebleed, very, very small. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I picked my nose, okay? Got, got up there and. So irritated this, this something. This is a nosebleed story to do with hypochondria. Yes. Oh. I picked my nose. 
Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm okay with sharing that with you all. We all do it. I don't eat mine. No, I've never picked my nose. Okay. No, I'm serious. I've never picked my nose once. So shame on you. Yeah. You definitely did when you were a kid. Excuse me. I know my nose, and I've never picked it. You will not find an image of me anywhere. You won't find records of it. I'm not saying that is no like an image of Shame you. on you. An image. And <laughs> shame on you for picking your nose. Anybody out there that's picked their nose and that does it, <laughs> shame on all of you. I don't just l- turn this off because I now judge you. <laughs> if you pick your nose, don't this is bullshit. Just saying, Sweating I don't accept it. Horseshit. Horseshit. Okay. <laughs> Had this tiny little nosebleed. <laughs> Um, and it was it was really small, but I was like, I've done done it because I had my nose cauterized. I don't I've know if you know. Done what, done it. I you had it. You, you had, you had it cauterized. So you know what cauterize? I mean, Alex we, of course does. But cauterization is is the act of kind of burning a wound to kind of singeing it to to, to yeah, shut it. And you can actually it, do yeah. it with a, <clears throat> a like a hot. It's not like an instrument. It's more of a. I, I looked up. You can kind of do it not with the corrosive kind of um, chemicals, think, yeah. but um, I had it done with the chemicals. I didn't and I haven't had a, bi- a, a big nosebleed. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't I had stuck a my nose on a Bunsen burner. Yeah, that's the way to that's do it. That's horrible. I haven't had a, a big nosebleed for years because of that. And they said it doesn't last forever. <laughs> but I think I picked and opened it. Anyway, it was tiny, so I was fine. And then I, uh, I was really, like, so the next day, okay, woke up. And I didn't have a, uh, I didn't have any nose. Didn't have a nose. No, I didn't have any symptoms of like a, a runny nose. Because <coughs> you never knows. Okay. Or like a congestion. But it felt, I felt a real tightness in my forehead. Like, and it, I wasn't like, met like, forg- like sinus pressure. Yeah, sinus pressure. Yeah. Number one rule of hiking, <coughs> can't go on a hike with a tight forehead. What are you doing? It was a I beautiful mean, hike. That's really it was scary, really, really nice. But I didn't. You know, I didn't want to worry you. I think I told you about it like once or twice. Like I had a little bit of pressure, but I didn't want to. But my hypochondria was kicking Serves in. Serves you right. And I was thinking it was because of the little nosebleed and because I blocked it off so quickly. Because what I'm really good at stopping the nosebleed usually. Very good. I had huh? a tiny little nosebleed. I put plugged it and clogged it. Pick it, start it, stop it. Yeah. Good. And then the next day, the next day, all this pressure. And I thought it's like blood or oh, something. Blood oh, has, it's, it's, a, it's blood coagulating. Has, blood has risen up. To your forehead in your sleep. This is very, yeah, that's, that's actually good. Good this thinking, Jonah. I'm telling you my that's hypochondria. Because really for some re- you must have been sleeping upside down like a bat. Is this your hypochondriac story of the week or what? Okay, sorry, I'm just picking it apart. Like words. you did your nose. Okay, great. <clears throat> and I started thinking there's maybe the blood isn't, I just opened up something and it's not, that wasn't the cause. I've got a bleed in the brain. <laughs> Yeah, and and, and so this no- is just open gate. <laughs> you notice how, you notice how I'm not laughing? A- no, I know because I'm like, yeah, this would be. This is what you'd be I thinking. Know, so wait, you think this is logical that instead of your nosebleed being the source, being the nose, you thought the bleed started at the forehead, trickled down your Christian, forehead. Just keep your nose. listening. <laughs> keep listening for f- God's sake. And it, I looked up, which you never do, and there's all these like uh, normal yeah. symptoms. But then I was, then it also said brain like tube like no like in between the eyes and i was like i felt that pain i felt that pressure and i was like <laughs> fuck i'm dying i've literally just got a girlfriend and i've got to say goodbye now so tis the end of like yeah. I've, it, this is like I've not fair it. like such is life you know she's gonna have an invisible boyfriend soon enough Don't and the tables will have turned well, even so now like then the next day i um i had a big nosebleed well it wasn't that big but it lasted for about 20 well, minutes was it big or wasn't it that big? It was pretty big. Choose one. It was pretty big, and this it is yesterday. There, it was up there. It was pretty big, yeah. It was it up was in his forehead. Yes, and I <laughs> was like... <laughs> I was trying to, like, remain calm. And I knew, I know it's normal, I know it's normal, but these feelings in my head... Th- this is where I'm coming to with this story, is that with hypochondria, you can't have anything like that and not think you're dying. No, no, yeah. no, no, no like, yes. yeah. Like, okay. even now, I'm like, I'm feeling things in my head and I'm understand. thinking we could all be laughing right now about this. In a week's time, it's going to be a fucking headline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I get and it. And he goes, and it was his last podcast. But you survive. And then you guys will get a lot of views. It will really help with the podcast. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll I'm willing it. have some kind of posthumous award. Yeah, there, and that, there it was. Yeah. Um, so there, there, there I've opened go. up, Story and you really ridiculed you. me the whole time. I did, time. and you know what? I, I, I did, but that's part of our dynamic. We, we, we take the piss out of each other. We really call each I other. I can't wait to hear your therapy. story of the week. Come on. Yeah, My, you know you. what's you sad? Fucker. Mine isn't going to be that funny, because 
It's kind of serious. Really? I seri- I'm serious. It's I'm not serious. Okay. I'm serious. Because it, honestly, <laughs> the, the reason is, is because I, 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 I don't know how to describe this. But You're just trying us not to get us to take the piss out of you right now. You're setting up stuff in a way where it's, it's like, sad. it's not funny. It's just kind of sad. All right, well, Charming. you take the, so t- don't, you, you don't, take, don't, don't take, take funny, you take the piss place. out if you want. But I didn't feel like I was dying. This wasn't, this is more of an anxiety moment than a hypochondriac moment. But part of it, I do, I do sometimes wonder what is the cause. Now, I've had panic attacks before in my life. One, we're, we're, me, we're both actors, me and Jonah. The first panic attack I ever had was on a set. It was horrible. I'd been stung by a bee in the spine, and it was at in the, the sp- spine. Wait, in wait, the back. Okay, wait, <laughs> I, have to a- I have to ask something about this <laughs> like, picture. Because the the, the, when you get stung by a bee, the we are filming? degree to which the the stinger goes down is maybe like a quarter no, no, of an no. inch. So and it's it not just a bee. Your spine. I'm doing myself a dis- <laughs> I'm doing myself spine. a disservice. I got stung by a bee in the I'm doing spine. myself a disservice. We were in Italy. <laughs> we were filming in a castle you in Italy. You can't see your hands. And it's, it's, it's all this shit is like going... <laughs> Well, do they want that? In the spine. In the spine. In the spine. We were filming in a castle in Italy, and I forget where it was. I think this was Sicily or, no, or Tuscany. Doesn't and, matter. And no, it does, because of the size of the bee. Uh, I, I know this. It was a Sicilian bee. It was. Those in a, freaking in, in, in a castle. No, Sicilian, we in all a castle. know. The listeners know. This We've was all heard the, about this. I'm not going to name drop. But this was the day we met someone that Name we, drop? Was this a famous bee? This was the day Was we, it Beyonce? No, no, no. <laughs> I don't you like yeah. jazz. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This was the day that we met one of our favorite actors who was in the film that we didn't get to do a scene with. So that's one of the reasons I remember it. You did not need to say that. I did because you're not n- realizing where we are. Name dropping. He, they don't even know Can who he is. Can we get a boo? Can we boo him? They don't is know. A boo? They don't know. Like, I don't just know. boo me. But they don't even boo. know. Did I say the name? Did I say the name? Sucker. Yet? Anyway, we were sat at, uh, we'd have lunch outside. Because it, it was hot and the whole crew would have lunch outside. And I was half in costume, half out of costume. Hadn't filmed yet. And this is a totally different story. This is going to have to be my story now. It wasn't a week. This was years ago. Um, but this was and a you're preface. telling so much details. A bee stung you. <laughs> no, why but you, that's why do we because now you know where you are it. and what you're because wearing. You and it's a it. hot day. Because we it all makes actual, sense. This is I'm all irrelevant wit. information. Hang on. It's like my do balls you, It's hot. Think about this. It's what hot. underwear were you wearing? Black. What day was it? Tuesday. Okay, great. What did you have for breakfast? Pizza. That's actually true. It's I true. I did serve pizza. I believe it. It's, yeah. it's hot. I'm in a wig. I'm dressed as an albino. And I'm in a period pants and period everything. Um, but I'm eating pasta. Okay. And I, I sit back on a plastic chair and I go, ah! <laughs> and for those that can't hear on a podcast, I did an under, like, it's as if I've been shot in the back. My arms went back. The pasta went everywhere. And I, I, I felt like I didn't go everywhere. That's a gross exaggeration of what <laughs> I was on the floor. He kind of went. Oof. People rushed over to me. Medics came. No, I'm joking. But I did scream to the point at which somebody, this kind Italian man, as quick as anything, They're flicked the bee off, pulled my shirt up, and put a penny on it because apparently he that acted very fast counteracted something to do the alkaline and the stuff with it. But and then he said, had he said, I saw it. The king wasp. Was that big, was and that's wasp. great for a podcast. It was not that King big. Wasp. It was not. It that was big. that big. I'm sorry, Christian. And I'm talking three, four inches. Mammoth, daddy wasp. That's ridiculous. Massive. <laughs> Mammoth, daddy wasp. <laughs> <laughs> this and is ridiculous. Got stung in the spine, and then that day I had my first panic attack whilst I was putting my costume on. It was about an hour after I'd been stung. I thought I was having a reaction. They called the medic over. It turns out to just be a panic attack. That was the first ever panic attack I'd ever had. Hadn't had one since. This last week, I've oh. been having panic. Um, my, no, no, I, I wouldn't even call them attacks. They're like panic, um, episodes. Episodes. They're like episodes of panic. A sprinkle of like, yeah. And it's, worry. I'll start pacing. Unfortunately, my girlfriend says, I'll start pacing in the morning. I can't eat breakfast. And then I'm just I'm lying in bed. And I, and I can't, there's no catalyst. It feels like there's no catalyst. Do you start, does it start to feel like the best way I can describe it? is everything in your body is like it starts getting your heartbeat starts to get a bit faster yes you lose your appetite and y- it's an unsettled 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 kind of like just you don't even know why but it feels like like yeah, something's very wrong doom. Yeah. impending doom i want to yeah. get out i want to stay in i want to get dressed and I don't that. they're like little panic attacks they, they do feel like little panic attacks but it feels so the reason i don't say panic attack is because i'm not hyperventilating but it feels like i just want to sleep and there's like any kind of but i can't sleep so you're right. It's harder it. to make fun of this one. I know. But I will say, I little bitch. <laughs> yeah, very funny. Sucker. Yeah, very nice. Bitch. But 
look, I I get it. I have just started kind of this on this road. Yeah. But You're welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Just relax, um, man. Part of it, you just you guys out. have just helped. Relax. You you guys have helped me because part of the advice I that think I think you're given you. as panic and maybe but part of the advice that you're given when you do have panic attacks or when you have anxiety <laughs> is to accept it and not to fight it. You do. You and I think the initial it. instinct is to fuck off, go away. I want to. I'm not having a panic attack. I'm fine. I don't have anxiety, and you kind of want to fight it. But I have been doing better with kind of accepting it as a reality. Yeah. Well, if we're getting and real, it's all in our heads, right? Everything is in our heads. But it, but that's the thing. It feels so well, out of my control. It feels like I feel like. Everything's fine. I have yes. nothing to panic no, about, but, but why is this happening? But, but to me? I, conscious, type thing. Though, so what I will say is that for because panic attacks, like the best way, like I have them, but I manage them so much better now because you have to shift from a little bit from not wanting the panic attack to happen. It sounds so weird to embrace it. To invite but, it but the whole yeah. thing, because yeah. you think you're you think you're doing wh when you say like. I'm, uh, you know, I don't, you know, I'm, f I know everything's fine because you know everything's fine, but that's part of the reason why you're panicking more because you know everything's fine and yeah. you're like, why do I feel this way? Yeah, that's you, it. You have to instead shift into embracing the feeling and let the panic attack come and don't wish it was over because that is, that's what perpetuates it. It's so strange. You have to sit there and watch it, actively watch the panic attack and your heart observe rate. Observe it. Observe it. And that's when it goes so much quicker give yourself time tell the people around you don't not tell them because that makes it almost that's even another worse. good thing like telling telling people for me is one of the most difficult things to do when you're having a panic attack but if you actually tell someone because you think if you make attack, it real then it's going to become a thing and, and there's a whole lot of denial which actually perpetuates it but i think a lot of people walk around try and do this thing and they go i know i've done it which i'm just like it's not happening you're at dinner it's it's like, not no, no it's not gonna happen that makes it so much worse yeah. you go out you take a breather and let it happen i was at musa and frank's with alex and i felt like i was dying because yeah. i'd yeah, accidentally was just, it was not i'd accidentally time. so I was, I was supposed to take ibuprofen uh, which is two <laughs> little blue pills. I love this story. Hang on, I love this story. Supposed to take ibuprofen, two little blue pills. I had a headache, and little I was pills. so excited to go to move some Franks with my cousin. And and about half an hour later, I was with my girlfriend, just watching Netflix. She might she might have even been singing or stuff. Something weird was going on. And it's not weird for her to sing. No, no, but I'm just saying something was going on where I should have been like focused. And I and I start to feel really sleepy, and then she saw my eyebrows furrow. And she said, is everything okay? I said, you look like Jack Nicholson when you did that. And I realized yeah. that I'd accidentally taken <laughs> two, two fucking sleeping tablets. Something I don't get about this is how do you accidentally do that? Because ibuprofens, most of the time, they look like solid pills. They're not gels. They were gels. And the ibuprofens you know I had else. were gels. He's just a real idiot sometimes and yeah. didn't read the sure. label. I am a real idiot. So you just, like, pills... Pills, and you know what? Okay. To me, every day, Here's it's a luck of the draw. unconsciousness. Every day, luck of the draw, <laughs> I, I open the medicine cabinet, eyes closed, pick up one. Your eyes take were a couple. closed. That's what I do. Every day. Your eyes were <laughs> That's That's eyes the were, ev Every day, uh, this, is my, this is my morning routine. Bang your head into the bathroom. No, open the door, find my way in. I like to pretend, just close my eyes. Open the drawer, pick a random bottle, take two, swallow That's them. That's what this sounds like to me. No, That's no. literally what it sounds like you're doing. That wasn't what happened. I honestly, I've really? taken- Really? This is what happened. I take ibuprofen. No. I've, I've been having headaches. I've been taking ibuprofen so often. It was the color I was looking for. I saw the blue I'm sorry, liquid gels. Anyway, long story short, I, I took two sleeping tablets. You're only supposed to take one because they're that heavy duty. Yeah. I took two sleeping tablets and one. they really work. I'm telling you, like, they really work. One of them really works because I've been taking them for insomnia that I'd been having. And then when I realized I took two, I think even if you don't have anxiety, you're going to worry. Because, worry. Yeah. like, I was like, I know it's not quail quaaludes, but I'm like, if I'm trying to fight sleep, what's going to happen? You're like, good night. Because good night. Exactly. And I thought, I really didn't want to. I should have canceled. I, I should have canceled the dinner. Yeah, he was, he was to be nice. Musso and Frank. Yeah, I yeah. should have cancelled the dinner, but I really wanted to go with him. I didn't want to disappoint him. And there was a time where he hadn't even left the house, and I should have cancelled, but I didn't. And so my panic grew as he was coming because I knew I either sleep or don't, and I couldn't sleep because I was yeah. worried. And I got there, and I just couldn't enjoy the dinner at all. And and it was such a lovely place, Mr. Franks. The pasta was lovely. I had it the next day. Good. But uh, it had set me in, because it, it was like I was panicking, but I was also fighting sleep. And read, it was a read, really read weird feeling. boxes, dude. I will, yeah. Uh, everybody out there, a little bit of advice. If you're about to take some advice. pills, 
I think you're the only person. Read, <laughs> yeah, yeah, read, yeah, read the label. I, I think you're fine, guys. You I, I, I'm sure you're reading what's going on. All right, fun little story. Okay, so let's move on to destination disease. I think Alex has a good one. I've got some stories. Destination disease. All right, Al. Be ready. Yeah, what's this destination disease story? Like I said, Alex has been on a world So tour just for recently. the viewers who don't know, and listeners who don't know what's going on, destination disease is basically stories from abroad where we felt like we were going to die. It's slightly different. And Alex, I'm sure, has loads because he's been on a world tour. So shoot, where, 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 where was this and what's the story? The f- the, a couple quick stories. The first one was at the beginning of the... Uh, the European run we did, which was a long time. It was like uh, seven weeks. So there was plenty of potential, like, you know, towns where I could have had panic attacks and <laughs> hypochondriac moments in. And this was towards the beginning of the tours, like a few days in, we're in uh, Poznan, Poland. Poland. Poland, which was great. By yeah, the way. Poland's cool. Was it cold? It was a little bit, but for, we got lucky. It was like beginning of fall. Um, wasn't okay. too cold, uh, really beautiful town. Nice. Um, so, uh, we're getting ready after we, uh, we had played in Poznan. We had a day off there, and then the day after that, we're getting ready to head out on a long drive. It was one of those nine-hour drives in, in the van to, uh, to an, a part of Germany. Okay. And so, what happened on this, this morning... I was worried was going to continue into our car drive, which would have really sucked. Right. So I get up, you know, kind of early, have have some breakfast before we get in the van, and mm. I'm with Jacob. Polish breakfast is that meat? Isn't that less like? It was funny. I you know half it, a sausage and they a had ham. like this cafe, which is really good, and they had a Mexican breakfast. Oh, cool. As they Mexican called breakfast. it, it was like What's that? it was a skillet thing with like nachos and <laughs> be- it was like beans. <laughs> the reason I did that is because Alex goes. Skillet and his skillet. elbows come up. I, I, I think he pulled the skillet with I don't know. I, 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 pictured, I pictured myself cutting the food for some reason. Skillet. That was Sorry, so very that strange. Breakfast. Mexican that. breakfast. He I was like, that sounds nice. Body. Anyway, and uh, yeah, it was like eggs and, and salsa or something. Green eggs and ham. Green eggs and ham. And Jacob, <laughs> Jacob eats breakfast with me and he goes, oh, I have to pick something up at the mall across the street. I, he was getting vitamins or something. And as we're in that Wide. store, I start losing the center of my vision. Like the the, ver- the center horrible. of my vision, there's either a dark spot or every <laughs> once in a while it would flash. There'd horrible. be like a little flash. So fun. That's horrible. So I, at first I'm going, okay, that's that's kind of weird, but I haven't been sleeping much, so maybe that's why. That and seems a very relaxed response from you particularly. Oh, uh, center of my vision's going, but you know what? <laughs> Lack of I'll sleep. just use my peripheral. Well, that was yeah. that was me oh, trying to explain the- it away. Right. That was oh, me okay, trying was to explain say, it away. Sometimes you, you, you have a pain in your knee and you think it's knee death. Yeah, knee but, death. <laughs> but he loses the center of his vision and he goes, you know what? we'll work with it. This, it is, was, this it, is the start the thing, of my demise, but it's probably just the center <laughs> of it, sleep. It wasn't like a huge, it was almost, have you ever had eye floaters? Like yeah. Those, okay, so at first I thought, okay, what if it's that, but at the center of my vision. Okay. And, okay. So, so, so it, was, it wasn't like a huge black hole. Not in at it. first. Okay. It was like a little flash. Okay. Like, so you were coming in, like... and and uh, and then it, I notice it's not going away, and then I start to notice that it's now morphing into what it, it was as if I had. Uh, it's like uh, it was looking at a cracked plane of glass, uh. a pane of glass, and uh. then it turned into like this amorphous psychedelic looking pattern oh. that was doing this. Did you eat Mexican mushrooms for breakfast? I might have. I don't know what was going on, but I, I was freaking out a little bit, but only so much because I remembered my mom had described this thing called an ocular migraine to me once. Right. Where it doesn't- ocular, inv- An ocular migraine. An ocular migraine. You don't have the symptoms of a migraine, but your vision gets distorted and you start to see stuff like that. Oh, what damn. And but it's non- a minor thing. Yeah, but nonetheless, Why I still started freaking suck. out a little bit because yeah. I was going, okay, but what if it isn't that? What if I have a tumor on yeah. the road? Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> and I get back <laughs> tumor to the, the tumor on the road. I get back to the hotel room. It's still not going away. Horrible. We have to get in the van. That must have been so distracting. It was the- bad. And I even when I closed my eyes, I could see this thing like pulsating in, in my vision. And honestly, I'd just like to point out that this happening 
in a different country yeah, is, even a, worse. is a scarier thing because you start to think about foreign hospitals I find scary usually they're fine but just being in a hospital in a foreign country I'm about to say horrible. Poland it would have been a lot cheaper than it, no exactly yeah, no it yeah. would have been it would have been, been fine I think but <laughs> besides the fact that we had to we, only had to pay we had to go Poland and drive rooms. for a really really long time yeah um, Shit. but it it lasted about a half hour half and, hour and, yeah and then it went away oh my god and and we got in the van so you think it, I was I'm gonna bring this up because as a hypochondriac you do tend to know about more illnesses than most, which can make it worse. Like it can, I think your broad knowledge on different ailments and different medical like goings on can make you more nervous because any little symptom you have think, I've got this, I've got tuberculosis, I've got pneumonia. But in this instance, I actually think that your mum having had, yeah, the knowledge it, it helped experience. a little bit. I still, it actually helped you out. I still was like kind of on edge about it because I was going, what? how long is this going to take to go away? If it doesn't go away within a half hour, what do I, because that's what actually online, it, it says episodes generally stop within an a half hour to an hour. Because I'd have, said, I'd have called my mum. My mum wouldn't have known what it was and I'd have had, I, I'd have just thought I was dying. Yeah, but I find being, that, that my hypochondria, the way it's manifested itself recently, is that it's so powerful that even when a medical professional tells me what something is, yeah. you don't believe me. Well, that's, that's, you're like, like, you didn't, that's, yeah, yeah, you it's didn't, neurosis. You didn't diagnose me correctly. Yeah, there's, there's a, there's a story of, of Jung's, uh, that he had a, a patient who was, Carl Jung. Yeah, Carl Jung. He was so neurotic to the point, it was of being delusional. There was something in his, uh, psyche that convinced him otherwise that he to the point where you deny physical he denied physical yeah, reality i, I totally and it can I, happen I in a bunch that. of different ways but in this case he was convinced he had cancer and he wow. went to the doctor had full body scans all this stuff and and still something in his head told him no you have cancer Carl yeah. Jung. yeah Carl, well not young one of his patients, one of one of his patients. And, he, and he said the guy was convinced, convinced. he had cancer <clears throat> and did he then manifest it on himself i don't think so I, I mean i think he ended up being okay but anyway that's my I poland story he needs to listen to this podcast whoever that is now there he's probably he's probably gone by now, now but i do have one other destination disease okay keep it going tail keep the music going. but it's it's quicker and it's more of a germaphobe thing because uh I don't know, germaphobe and hypochondriac, I think, often go hand in hand. It's yeah, oh yeah, no, no, yeah. totally, totally, they're, they're, they're best buds. I, I've, that's the funny thing, now I'm actually identifying as a hypochondriac because I just identify. Identifying. No, seriously, I mean, do we, ha do we get, do we use the same restrooms as everyone else? Do we want our own restroom? We should fight for it. <laughs> yeah, hypochondriac, everyone has to actually, get that full would body work. sanitization. No, because we want a clean work. restroom. We want a clean restroom now. We need that one, funny. what would the sign be? It would just be a stethoscope. A hazmat. A man, yeah, yeah. So no one else walks suit. Yeah. 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 Um, but no, now that I have started to kind of feel like a hypochondriac, I'm also turning into not a germaphobe, but I'm very conscious now of when I'm washing yeah, my hands. Yeah, paranoid. Uh, Let's see this other story. Was. Destination. Destination. Where, which easy. destination was this? This was in Dresden, Germany. Ooh, Big Dresden. up Dresden. Yeah, very, very Eastern Germany, oh, and like uh, it was. We had played this gig on Halloween there, and I, I, I remember Halloween. We uh, love how America the day so. after, we had to you know make another drive, and. Uh, a, a long one, so we had to rush out and get breakfast, yes. and uh, get to this restaurant. And I, I text Jacob, "Hey man, I found a place, come by." So I wait in line, and <laughs> you're not gonna be able to keep that up. Right? I was gonna ah. say if he can keep this up the whole time, he's gonna. Well, hurt when himself. it gets when it gets when it gets scary, I'll come back. Okay. Please don't. Um, I'll do sound effects. No, you come. So I order my food at this place. Looks nice enough. I get a bagel or something and a coffee, and then I start noticing that it's taking a really long time. And for, for, your bagel for the food for yeah, food, yeah. and and it's kind of disorganized. And Jake shows up and he starts to order, and I I look over at the line cook, like the guy who's doing the the mm. final prep, yeah, for all the food, Don't. and I notice he's not wearing gloves. Oh. Okay, I notice he's not wearing gloves. <laughs> yeah. Which is like, okay, if your hands have been washed, there's different health standards over there or whatnot. I'm, but I'm still looking at him. What are you he doing? He looked like a dirty Dresden shirt. I don't need my gloves. He had uh, glasses and a beard. I don't know. A beard. Yeah, he had a beard. That wasn't covered up. 
that I remember. But yeah, anyway, I, don't need no I start. I just start watching him because I'm going. Oh, I wonder if that's my food there. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he's preparing my I'm bagel. I'm carelessly make this bagel. I'm scared. No what's happening? Yeah, what's going okay, happen? so luckily Jake hadn't ordered yet because I look at this dude and he's not. Licking and sucking on <gasps> his fingers, and he and touching sauce and stuff I like see that. Oh, my yeah, this is good God. bagel. So I'm doing the sound effects. Are you okay? I'm I'm just invested in this store, and I want to give the viewers a fourth <laughs> dimensional <laughs> coronavirus. Experience. But the guy, yeah, I just sit there watching <laughs> the dude like trying sauce, licking his fingers and sucking on them, and then going sauce. going and putting the ingredients together, and I go, I don't care what. If I even get a refund at this point, I'm leaving this fucking restaurant. Jacob, you're coming with me. Did and you I'm get a refund? No, I had to leave. We didn't have time. I was just like, I don't care. I'll cut my losses. Six or seven euros, whatever. I got the fuck out of that place. Well, That's yeah, how get disease gets spread. Yeah, totally, dude. <laughs> That's definitely That's disease. awful. Yeah. That's really awful. I, said, I think, for, but it was nice to have the sound effects. Hmm. I think for hypochondriacs, it's it's like if you start <laughs> if you would start to like think about what goes on behind kitchens, yes. we would never re out and no, see no, those no, horrible no. videos of like those subway workers snotting and, and spitting in subway. Yeah, it's like horrible. I, I did write an happens. angry Yelp review that never got posted. Oh wait, you've got to tell this story before the end of the episode, or maybe we save it for another episode. But yeah. I mean, whilst we're here at food, the the band aid story. I, I want to oh, tell no, that story. Oh no, okay. Too. All right. Well, I'll read you my review. Okay. First, I love a good. I mean, we we like weird things as a family, don't we? I mean, Whoa. us three as as Not cousins, you know. Sometimes we'll go on a YouTube tangent and we'll watch weird things. Tangent. Like we like the a paparazzi tangent? videos where, especially Alec Baldwin being angry at paparazzi. With those it's videos, we love. Oh yeah. Um, we go on some weird tangents, but celebrities getting angry um, at paparazzi. We videos. also like Alex got me on this. Like reading yeah. bad Yelp reviews is funny. It's yeah. really oh, I funny. Found it. I found it. Is this yours? Yeah, and I wanted to post it, and Yelp was being cranky. And by the way, Yelp is kind of shitty in that way. If you're not some person who reviews all the time, they just knock your review. To yeah, the very sponsor bottom. us, Yelp. We don't endorse Yelp. Sponsor I, I'll read us. it. I was, I was like, I've never really written. Actually, I've written a couple in my How life. How do we put a bad Yelp review on Yelp? <laughs> oh, I think so you, this place, us, by the though, way, you have to be really angry. If we've written a bad Yelp, yeah, review, I was pissed. And I, okay, this is the name of the place, Dresden, Germany, Elb Salon. Don't go to, don't, don't go, go to this Elb place, Salon. freaking Gary gross. Gary with a beard and no gloves is going to suck his fingers while he makes your bagel. <laughs> you in Dresden. Actually, I, I, I want Jonah to read this because I think it would, it, I don't know, I think it would be funny okay, if let, let's let it. the dyslexic read it, yeah. this is good. It already messes with my s dyslexia, that Elb Salon. Yeah, I don't know what Don't that read means, that, just read the Yelp review. One star. <laughs> One star. <laughs> I never ever write reviews. I yelp. <laughs> but wait, wait. I that's yelp. what you oh put. God, that's did. what you put. I never ever write reviews. Oh, I, I yelp. <laughs> on <laughs> yelp. <laughs> I'm gonna read it as it is. <clears throat> <clears throat> I never ever write reviews. I yelp. But felt compelled to give people a heads up. This service being slow was a negligible offense compared to the fact that I saw one of the cooks lick and suck on his fingers without gloves while preparing food for customers. He even noticed that I caught him doing it this a couple times. He did, he looked at me. Yeah. Hmm. That's how disease gets spread. <laughs> I was in a rush, so I left <laughs> without eating. I was or in a rush, I was losing the center of my vision. I was in a rush, so I left without eating or getting a refund. Gross. Fantastic. Good bad Yelp review there, Al. Yeah. What if my name was? What if my name was? Why is this happening to me? <laughs> <laughs> what if my name was? It was a hor it was a horrible story to, to to imagine somebody licking their fingers. Oh, he was wow. looking so looking at me too. I I kind of looked. At him just like to <laughs> he's make sure. like looking as he's but licking you had, his thumb. Yeah, you know, had an idea. Christian had an idea for this podcast, which was us to try out the worst reviewed food places. Well, I have this one segment that we haven't used mm. yet, but and we haven't even created the jingle yet, but maybe in future episodes you're going to hear this. My episode, my, my, my idea for a segment was called Food That Might Kill You, and the jingle so would be bad. like, Food That Might Kill You, jong, 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 like that. Oh. And, and the idea was that I would, as a surprise... Randomly. As a surprise. Yeah. Bring in. <laughs> so it's a surprise for you two. Not a great one. Bring in. 
Just for us to. Because it's like, a, no, for all of us to eat, but like exposure therapy, Ex I'd find the worst reviewed place. That's not a thing. I'd like, I'd find the worst reviewed candy or the <laughs> exposure worst. Exposure to like food poisoning. Wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. That's the not therapy. Food. That's just fucking it's dumb. exposure food, it's exposure. <laughs> it's exposure, <laughs> exposure therapy food. only if there's a fear inherent already. Like if, if. We have a fear. Yeah, of and like, I'm not afraid of it. And also, like, what are you gonna do if someone's afraid of vomit? Be like, eat the barf. Yeah, <laughs> that's so, not, you're not gonna do. I'm so definitely not doing. We're not that. eating it, dude. Okay, it, it would be a surprise that didn't I still go anywhere. think this segment would work. That you know, people go to get tattoos at the worst review tattoo parlors. People go and they do this stuff. Yeah, then we will actually get hepatitis. Guys, and then it won't be <laughs> here's what I'm thinking. If we were gonna jump on that bandwagon, because no it's a medical, because it's a medical podcast, we can't go to the worst reviewed doctors. That's even more dangerous. So I think, let's why not? Let's just not go to the worst reviewed anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Soon we're gonna be the worst reviewed podcast if you don't let me get my story Ooh. out. Ooh. Ooh, give us good reviews. Did people review podcasts? I don't know. Probably. Probably. So, like a, yeah. oh. so oh. I would like to end <laughs> by saying this. The coronavirus is spreading fast. It's rampant. This is my advice. Buy I'm, your masks. No, no, masks don't help. I looked this up. So why is everybody in China wearing masks? Because you looked this up. Because the Chinese you know, don't they, know. They, they wear them anyway because the pollution's really bad out there. Anyway, what this is I'm just gonna give you some advice for not catching the flu and actually for the flu the mask would help, but for the coronavirus is an interesting thing. It's not spread through the air. It's not spread that way. It's not airborne. No, it's not airborne. It's um, y the, the, the biggest thing they're telling us to do is wash our hands constantly. You basically be Alex Sill. Um, that's the best way that you can do it. Don't hashtag Alex Sill it. And also like they're basically <laughs> saying anyone that has flu like symptoms. They're literally saying just try and stay away from those people because it looks like a flu. It looks like like a cold and or then like you, something. What happens? You, you're what what? What happens yeah. is what, it's drier, what, so what, it's like what what happens it's, if you get ill? It's it's a drier <laughs> symptoms. It's like it's like a dry cough. Um, it's not like the coldy kind of like up here. It's more like here, and then you get pneumonia and you could die. Yes. Yeah, but what we're trying to say is stay safe out there, stay, kids. Wash yeah. your hands. Wash your hands is very um, important to wash your we, hands. We do have a disclaimer, but if you know, if you are feeling any symptoms, if you are feeling ill, um, just worry about don't, it. Don't seek don't, a medical professional. Don't just listen to our podcast. No. Do seek obviously medical help. We all we are here if you need. We are here. Com we comfort. do. We do. Ha you can write us at our last podcast at gmail.com so you can give us an email we, we, we're on instagram at probably our last podcast we're on twitter at probably our last podcast Why is the email our last podcast it's more ominous it's more like definite like it is our last yeah podcast. maybe we'll change that we'll, we'll fact check this it's just a long email but um you can dm <laughs> us on any of those on any of those platforms and write us and we sometimes have a segment where you can call in so if anybody wants to Ask us questions uh, if anybody. In saying that, if you're contacting us, it's not for any help. It will make you worry more. Like you're contacting three hypochondriacs. So if it's about health, don't bother. But if you want to call in and speak about the podcast, ask us questions. You're a hypochondriac. It can be comforting to speak to other hypochondriacs. That would be a good if thing. If you just want to call us and just be, just hurl abuse at us, we also accept that. We accept abuse, yeah. Because uh, every, you know, all form of publicity is, that's therapeutic. is, is a good publicity. So. You know, if you have something bad to say about us, put it on the internet too. Put it on the internet. Like put it yeah. out there. Give us bad shit. Yelp reviews. We don't just want good comments. Yelp reviews. You can call us yeah. and you can Ooh, call we us. We would read those. We would read those. Yeah. We'd have a kick. We, out we'd those. read those. No, but also bad. We like hype. We like your stories. If you have stories similar to us, if you have stories, yeah, of call in. Moments, please. Call, in call in. Share your stories. We'll all laugh at you. Share your Be therapeutic. Overthinking brains. Uh, but thank you very much for listening, guys. I think that about wraps up this episode. I think so. I think we're. We're done for it's the day. Yeah, I mean, this is probably the last one, right? Yeah. From sunny Los Angeles. Sunny Los Angeles. Sunny to uh, Licky Dresden. To Lickety Lackety Lack. Lickety hmm, Schmickety Schmick. If you have a minor discomfort in your upper chest and you immediately assume it's a cardiac arrest. Oh, doctor, doctor, Ooh, please give me an answer. Got this pain in my left ball, and I just know, know that, that it's cancer. Know that it's cancer. Now all of our doctors are feeling harassed, so this is probably our last pod. <coughs> Sounds like pneumonia. Probably our last podcast. <laughs>